The found footage genre has seen perhaps a dozen or two really noteworthy films come out inside of it, from the granddaddy of The Blair Witch Project to the cultural bellwethers that are the Paranormal Activity series to this weekend's big budget special effects extravaganza that is Chronicle. Dude, holy for the most part, films like Chronicle are the outlier though, with most of the films in the genre proceeding from very modest budgets. That wasn't the case for Cloverfield though, the 2008 film that was a product of an intense and secretive marketing campaign that left almost everyone interested in the film guessing as to what it was about until the film itself was released in early January of that year. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Despite all of that, there's something to be said about a film that leaves a few questions unanswered, as Cloverfield certainly does. As a found footage film, it is undeniably one of the highest budget installations in the genre, with $30 million reportedly being spent on the film, and many more millions being spent on its marketing. Most found footage films are a tenth of the budget or less, and often wind up being more affecting and scary despite their low budget roots. Despite that, one of the first films produced through J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot Productions banner is still one of the most mysterious and interesting found footage films to come out in the last decade. Even so, it still cannot escape the also mysterious screen tag of being half good. When we call a movie half good, we take a look at some of its aspects as being pretty great and some of its aspects as being meh, not so great. What's up? We'll take a look at some of those aspects in a minute here, then decide on an ultimate verdict. So, without further ado, let's let the destruction begin. The Bad Brosifery. Cloverfield is one of the purest and most distilled displays of broness that you're likely to witness outside of a commercial for Smirnoff Ice. Never have we seen more stubbly beards or half untied ties or people writing what are bound to wind up on text from last night. The characters are, as a group, kind of detestable. In that movie way of being a little too slicked up, a little too groomed, a little too polished, as if Patrick Mayton from American Psycho had decided to become the world's most prolific sperm donor. We all love seeing pretty people in our movies, but these guys wind up being a little too over the top, with our supposed hero Rob having apparently slept with his good friend Beth and then cutting off all contact with her. I love this guy already. Oh, I could just see this ending up on the internet. Rob makes up slightly for his douche-tasticness by attempting to find Beth in the rubble of New York City after a giant monster attacks it. But he and the rest of his generic 20-something friends do little to make us like them after an almost interminable 20-minute party scene at the beginning of the yeah, film. Sorry, I so. see that, but this is more important. To a man uh, and woman, they come across as almost supernaturally vacuous, to the point where it's difficult not to cheer when they start getting picked off one by one by the debris of the monster's horrific attacks. The good, the atmosphere. This is disgusting. They're all running in the same direction. As a found footage film, Cloverfield relies on the omnipresent cameraman, one HUD, who follows our crew along as they attempt to rescue Beth from her apartment. He, of course, films the entire adventure on a camera that somehow manages to interpolate his footage with footage of Rob and Beth's earlier dates, despite that kind of not really being what cameras do. As a disaster film set in New York City, it doesn't avoid any of the obvious tropes that it might rely on, even going so far as to self-consciously call back to the harrowing images of 9-11 as the Chrysler building comes down, sending a cascade of dust and debris down the crowded city streets. <laughs> Despite the fact that we're tipped early on to the fact that a monster roams those streets, its appearance is never fully explained. That is, of course, probably the best way to proceed in a movie like this, where our Scooby gang faces off with the destruction of New York landmarks like the Statue of Liberty and the Brooklyn Bridge. Cloverfield, like Spielberg's World of Worlds, trades on the handicam amateur footage that was so prevalent in the days after 9-11, offering up screaming hordes of New Yorkers reacting to horrific images that they can't avoid seeing. In a way, it's a film that forces its audience to confront their own desires to be entertained by their own voyeurism, especially as a film we're supposed to be entertained by starts killing off its characters in a slow dance of death. It's still a film that manages to surprise, especially when the military makes a sudden and overwhelming appearance shortly after the group's first encounter with the creature, and one kind of great example of what you can do with POV footage and a sizable budget. The Bad, The Shaky Cam. 
Found footage films have often come under fire for their nausea-inducing handheld camera work and are seemingly shot primarily without the benefit of Steadicam rigs. The Blair Witch Project certainly gave me a headache as I neared the end of it and Cloverfield is nearly, if not quite as bad as its ancestor in that regard. Many of the dialogue shots are fairly steady, but when the crew hits the streets and the action starts to heat up, everything can get really blurry really quick. Add to this the camera's proclivity for saying, oh God, 1,000 million times in a row. Oh my God! Oh my God! And you're sometimes left with an assault on the senses that leaves you closing your eyes and shutting your ears at the same time. Some of the shots don't even particularly make any sense, as when HUD drags Rob out of a helicopter with both hands, while also somehow managing to aim a camera. His perseverance is rewarded with one of the film's clearest shots of its monster, followed by one of the shakiest of the shaky shots. Of course, the verite stylings of the camera work is also what puts you in the moment and makes you believe that you're actually inside the movie, so to some this will be more of a positive than a negative. The Good, the Marketing Campaign. It's gonna be the best night ever. J.J. Abrams is known for working with secrets in the shows and movies that he produces and directs. And both Super 8 and Cloverfield played with the idea of dramatic events occurring without really tipping their hands as to what was causing those events. Even if, in the end, our suspicions, that it's a giant monster, are confirmed, oh my God. Oh my God. Cloverfield still at least deserves credit for a marketing campaign that was a far cry from the show all the cool moment trailers that we get nowadays. The first teaser trailer for the film showed off some of the more shocking explosions from early on in it, but still made it seem as though some kind of horrific natural disaster could be occurring. It's also one of the only teasers in recent memory that doesn't use the title of the film at all. Cloverfield is a word that theoretically refers to the government designation for their investigation into the monster, but it's a word that, to the best of my recollection, isn't used or referred to in the film at all. Even the cast of the film wasn't told what kind of film they were auditioning for, and were reportedly giving pages from law scripts to read. There's something to be said for saving a bit of mystery for when an audience gets into a theater, and Cloverfield does that job better than most. Oh my God. Jonathan? Oh shit. Cloverfield's negative aspects are frustrating distractions from what is otherwise a pretty solid film. It's a film that perhaps works better as a marketing concept than an actual movie though. And when the monster starts appearing on camera more often as the film rolls on, its impact is somewhat muted and the film becomes less scary than simply loud. Found footage films are often best when the evil inside of them is heard rather than seen, and Cloverfield simply can't resist showing off what winds up being what is ultimately a pretty standard giant monster. Some might say that Super 8 has a similar problem. That said, it's still a pretty entertaining movie, even if it doesn't quite hit the level of quality it feels like it should. Director Matt Reeves went on to better things with his 2010 remake Let Me In, but he, writer Drew Goddard, and Abrams all apparently wish to return to the Cloverfield universe with a sequel at some point in the future, although all of them say it might not occur for a few years yet. In the meantime, I'm curious as to where you think Cloverfield stands in the field of found footage horror films. I personally would put it a bit below the better Paranormal Activity movies and the Blair Witch Project, but far, far above the devil inside. Let us know your opinion in the comments below.